Right, so Mr. Palmer here, basically uh, got a video here on use of hash algorithms. We're going to be going through these particular questions. So what are the features that indicate a high quality hash algorithm? And then thinking about the typical usage of hash, hash algorithms or some usage scenarios. If we then think about those usage scenarios in the context of those um, the quality indicators, we should actually be able to uh, appreciate why we want to use hash algorithms in those cases. Um, uh, and therefore why why hash algorithms are useful okay sorry there are no fancy animations or anything this one's going to bang to the content ASAP so uh, a hash algorithm is a function that's going to take in an input a variable size so we're going to feed in uh, binary strings of varying uh, size basically but the hash uh, that is generated is always going to be of the same size okay so Things that we want to think about uh, with a hash, uh, quality hash algorithms that basically we're generating very, very different hashes for very similar inputs. Okay, so even if we feed in two uh, bits of data that are quite similar in nature, we're going to get an output that's vastly different. Okay, that means that we're going to reduce the amount of collisions. So two um, input streams generating the same output hash, therefore causing us confusion. Uh, there is a uniform spread over the problem space so basically we're not generating a bunch of hashes within the same range and then a few hashes outside of that range uh, every time we generate a hash it's going to be you know quite wildly different and this is related to the first point point a in terms of collisions because basically when um, we are generating uh, different hashes it means that it's very easy to then identify the input based on the uh, the, the hash uh, we're not having to do something else to try and um, and res uh, you know resolve that um, collision. Okay, so now let's think about some typical use of scenarios. So the first one is a hash table. Um, if you remember when we've learned about files, we talked about serial sequential files, index sequential files. Okay, and the third one was that ran the fourth one, sorry, random access files where we are storing uh, data in random locations. Okay, based upon the the address generated from the key. And the reason for that is uh, trying to access the data sequentially or in, a, or in a serial nature just basically takes too much time. So uh, the advantage of using hash algorithms is that we can basically locate data very, very quickly um, within our file. All right. Um, now, when we think about the quality of um, indicators of hash algorithms, basically, uh, if we think about primary keys, for example, um, in a database, all right, the key kind of in increases sequentially usually, all right. So you know customer one customer two customer three customer four customer five right the hash function basically is if it can generate a, um, a large spread of output addresses and creating uh, you know with a low risk of collisions basically we can have a high we can uh, retrieve the data quite quickly because we're not going to have uh, a problem where we're going to try and store two data uh, two two file records in the same place at the same address okay so we're linking there back to the usefulness uh, or the, those those quality indicators all right another um example now so that was a familiar example um that we've we've looked at previously in class anyway all right this is the this is a new one all right so for example removing duplicate data um imagine i got a bunch of files or got a bunch of records all right we want to um decide we want to remove basically the duplicate data stored in the file now uh, what you could do is you could um, sort all of that data and then compare pairs all right but a bitwise comparison sorry a bit comparison uh, of all of that data might be too time consuming okay it'd be far quicker to generate a hash of each data item and basically anytime you get a duplicate hash you just store it in a collection you keep adding every time you get a duplicate of a particular hash it goes into that collection then basically what you're able to do then is then examine each of those connection collections that have duplicates to see whether they are really duplicates or not and get rid of all the ones that you don't need anymore okay so why is it quicker basically it's much quicker to c compare um, a hash uh, than it is to compare an input file so I mean, if you can imagine if we're trying to compare duplicate images uh, you might have millions of bits in a file but if those bits have been can uh, if you uh, generate hashes of uh, those image files those hash might only be a few bytes in size and they're much quicker to compare all right the other advantage here now is to do with generating very different hashes based upon the um, the a similar input because the actual bit pattern within a file is going to be very very different 
um, even if it looks the same to us. Okay, so you might have taken a photo on burst. Okay, very minute differences between those files um, in that burst of photos. However, the actual bit patterns are different, and so therefore the hash will be different, and so therefore the duplicate, uh, sorry, the similar looking images are not actually duplicates, and therefore they will have different hashes and they won't be marked as duplicates because they are in essence different files okay now um, something that's a bit uh, relate is related but is not um, using one of the quality indicators basically is that when you want to find similar data because you're looking for some kind of a, a trend or a relationship okay um, here you're using hash algorithms that don't have a good spread because hashes that are then similar to each other may indicate that you've got related data okay but why are we using it once again look what it is all right it's quicker to compare hashes than to do um, this kind of bitwise bit bit pattern comparisons okay on a bit by bit basis for every bit in a stream of data okay see that same quality indi quality indicator keeps coming up uh, something else all right so again this time we want to compare substrings of data within a file right um, so it could be, uh, for example, genetic information. All right, uh, it's far quicker to split that uh, that data into strings of length. Uh, then each of those strings, uh, substrings, has a hash generated, and then you can compare the hashes to to spot uh, matches. All right, and again, comparing hashes will use less time. Yeah. Uh, also, now let's leave that one out. Okay, let's just stick with that one. Um, final one to do with security okay so basically how do we know that uh, data has been transmitted without it being changed in transmission so some kind of uh, malicious attack taking place or data has not been modified so some uh, data is on a server somewhere you want to access that data and download it um, well basically we can use a hash algorithm to generate a hash and we have that hash um, available so when I download some data I can uh, run my uh, pass it through my uh, hashing function and it will generate a hash for me and I can compare that to the original hash from the uh, sender uh, to see whether the data has been modified and the reason here again is that remember it's to do with that uh, that um, generating a wildly different hash even though there's a minor difference in the input data so um, even if only a couple of bits has been changed, maybe only one bit has been changed, the actual output is going to be wildly different. And I would know that something has gone wrong somewhere. Okay. So the key things to, to take away from that, I've put in bold on this slide. Okay. So remember that we're talking about, uh, we got. it doesn't matter what the size of the input is, it's going to generate an output of a fixed size that's going to allow me to do a comparison between the two, the two um, inputs. Okay. Uh, we want to make sure that we don't have... Uh, collisions all right um, and by not having collisions we can basically securely identify the inputs from that hash okay and the only reason we're able to do that is because we're getting very very different hashes for very similar inputs okay there might only be a couple of bits different in between the two inputs however we are generating quite different hashes yeah um, so th those are the kind of things that you need to be thinking out in the context of answering an exam question about hash algorithms all right um, you should be able to answer all of those questions now and you should be able to do some of those uh, questions when you come into class